Hello everyone. Welcome to the first video in the series on steps in endodontic treatment. And through this series, we aim to discuss the key aspects involved in endodontic treatment right from the start to the end of a root canal treatment. And in this session, we'll be focusing on diagnosis and treatment planning in endodontics. And the journey to a definitive treatment begins with an accurate diagnosis. However, an accurate diagnosis is not always possible as many endodontic diseases share the same signs and symptoms and hence the importance of diagnosing correctly. For this, our primary objectives are to adjust the patient's chief complaint, determine the cause and eliminate it. The standard diagnostic framework we use today is a SOAP format where S stands for subjective information, that is what the patient tells us in his own words. O stands for objective information, what we observe and gather from the patient, from the patient's history of presenting illness, from the extraoral and the intraoral examination. A stands for assessment, where the information collected is used to make a diagnosis. And P stands for plan, the treatment plan for the diagnosis. So the steps involved in endronic diagnosis are recording the chief complaint of the patient. It is very important as it helps in establishing a line of communication with the patient and taking the medical and the dental history of the patient, conducting the clinical examination, performing the diagnostic test and radiographic assessment. A thorough medical history should also be taken as some of the diseases may affect the diagnosis and alter the outcome of the treatment. There are no contraindications for endodontic treatment based on medical conditions except for uncontrolled diabetes and a very recent myocardial infarct. Scully and Carson have given a checklist of the medical conditions which require special care and these are A for anemia, B for bleeding disorders, C for cardiorespiratory disorders, D for drug treatment and allergies, E for endocrine diseases, F for fits and pains, G for gastrointestinal diseases, H for hospital admissions and attendance, I for infections, J for jaundice, K for kidney diseases and L for likelihood of pregnancy or pregnancy itself. In addition, we must check for a history of any communicable diseases like HIV, Hepatitis, TB and in the present scenario COVID. Also, patients in the high risk category for developing bacterial endocarditis must be given antibiotic prophylaxis. There can also be medical conditions that mimic dental conditions like referred pain in the jaw like in case of a heart attack. Pain is often the most frequent chief complaint of the patient and we need to ask the patient if he can point to the exact location of the problem, the severity and the nature of the pain like if it is intermittent or continuous, throbbing, sharp or dull, the frequency, spontaneity, the kind of stimulus that elicits a response, duration of the pain and the aggravating and relieving factors. It is also important to ask leading questions like a history of a recent filling accident or trauma that trigger the pain and we have to correlate between what the patient has told us and what we see clinically. The objective findings include visual and tactile examination, extraoral and intraoral findings, percussion, palpation, periodontal examination, diagnostic test and radiographic assessment in order to come to a correct diagnosis. And in an extraoral examination, we need to check for any facial asymmetry or swelling, extraoral draining sinus, trauma, or any other deviations from the normal. And you must palpate the submandibular and the submental knots by standing at 12 o'clock position. And if the patient has enlarged the tender knots, we may not be necessarily dealing with an endodontic problem. Post these steps, we move on to the intraoral soft and hard tissue examination. We need to inspect the palate, tongue, gingiva, and buccal mucosa for any abnormalities like inflammation, pockets, swelling or growth, and document these findings. This also includes the presence of a draining sinus tract, which if present, we can trace it with a gutta percha point and take a radiograph. Many a times we will notice that the tracing will end on a tooth further away from the site of drainage. In heart tissue examination, we need to check for caries, trauma, mobility, depressibility, trauma from occlusion, non-caries loss of tooth structure, discoloration or fractured tooth or fillings. So with this, we come to the end of general oral examination. And in the next video, we'll be discussing the diagnostic test and their significance. Thank you.